Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to talk about how to quote a cabling job. Um, I know a lot of people have asked me to do this video over the last couple months, so I decided to sit down and write out some of the things you should do, some of the things you should know uh, before you embark on a cabling job. Now, the first thing you need to know is that you got to have a good contract. So. Um, you need to come up with a contract that reflects every possible area of, uh, you know, cabling you could possibly think and payment, when people are going to pay you, things like that. Let's talk a little bit about that. So if you're talking about a small job, and we're going to talk about small jobs, medium jobs, and big jobs, okay? So if you're talking about a small job, you're new to the industry, this is the first time you've done anything like this, let's stick with the small jobs until you really learn what's going on, until you understand the situation and things like that. But if you're working a job that's of a considerable price, you may want to write up a contract where you get things called progress payments. So that's where you uh, charge a certain amount up front, you know, 20, 30% up front. And then as you make progress, you ask for money every week or every two weeks. And it has to be something that both you and the customer agrees on. Now, if you're dealing with a small, you know, someone calls up says hey i need one drop uh type of thing well then you know you, you tell them that they'll need to pay upon completion or something like that or or you know as you do the work or whatever but that's not worth even doing a contract on to be honest with you you know i've had people in the past they have uh, called me and they've said things like um you know i need two drops and i would like you to uh, give me a quote on it can you come out and look at my building and uh, make sure that, um, you know, it's something you can do and can I get a written quote? And it's like, well, it doesn't really make sense to do a written quote on one or two drops. And I'll tell you the reason why, or even up to five drops, is the time involved in going out and looking at the building and estimating the work and everything else, uh, it just is not cost effective. And so sometimes what you could do is you just come up with a standard price for um, you know uh, four or five drops and and for those people who don't know what a drop is a drop is an outlet on the wall so uh, a computer outlet it's called a drop because you drop the cable down the wall and of course it goes you know back to the phone room things like that so you can just give them a ballpark figure at that point and most businesses are going to understand that that's a ballpark now above five let's say ten or more uh, you really want to see the building first before you start quoting, especially if you have competitive quotes. You want to make sure uh, that you're competitive, that you're giving it a good deal, that you're not missing some uh, details. You know, is it wood construction? Is it metal construction? Things like that. Uh, and sometimes people will call up and say, you know, I need my house cabled. Uh, well, cabling a house is difficult. Um, that's where I started cabling years ago was I would start cabling homes. And you know, you have that, that sealed ceiling, you have, uh, you know, you, you don't have easy access to the, uh, to the building, to the construction of the building. It might have um, wood construction, and most houses do have wood construction. And so what happens in wood construction is they put in there what's called a fire break, and that's a horizontal two by four or two by six uh, that sturdies the uprights and also I guess it provides a fire break if there's a fire in the lower part of the wall But you got to drill through that. So how are you going to get behind the wall to drill through that? And there's a video on that and how you do that and, and how you cable a house and it's not easy The problem I've run into when I cable houses or I have in the past and I, I shied away from them Some people have expertise in this area and they're pre pretty good at it, but I did not like cabling homes and the reason why, when I first got started, someone would say, hey, can you come out and put in, you know, an outlet for me in the family room so I can put a phone there? And, you know, a phone outlet's pretty easy to put in and everything else. But when you talk about a house, it's a lot different. So it's going to take you sometimes four or five times longer to cable a wood construction building than it is this your normal commercial building that, that has metal um, uh, two-by-fours in the walls with a drop ceiling. So there's a difference in different types of construction and things like that. But there's also a difference in size. So if you're, you're dealing with 10 drops and, and below, it's going to be more uh, labor involved, believe it or not, 
than if you're doing 100 drops. That's per drop labor. And the reason why is, let's say you have 10 drops uh, in a building, right? Someone calls you up, let's say you have five. Well, you gotta get, you gotta drive there, that's first of all. And then once you drive there, you gotta get out your, your cable and your tools. And it takes a little bit of time to coordinate with the customer. You know, they're there and they're talking to their customers. And so sometimes you have to wait till they're done talking so you can get some time to uh, get the details and make sure you understand and you know, there's a floor plan that you both agree on. So you gotta go around that room and, and look at where the drops are gonna be and everything else. And, and uh, then you gotta bring in your, your ladders and your cable and everything else. So that prep time and that uh, deprep time um, also costs uh, a lot of labor. Uh, now, if you're doing time and materials, which is probably the best way to do it if it's under five drops, even if it's, well, maybe not 10 drops, but under five drops, it's probably best to do uh, time and materials. Uh, start your time when you get out of your vehicle, when you get out of your truck. End your time when everything is packed up and put away, uh, because that's a legitimate time. It's not just the time you're, you know, you, you show up, you get the, you know, all the details, everything else, you set up your boxes, and if you start time there, you, you've really lost a lot of time because it takes some significant time to get those boxes ready, boxes of cable, they come in a thousand foot reels, um, pull boxes usually, that's the best way. And, um, you know, by the time you figure out how things are going to go in the ceiling, what ceiling tiles need to be dropped, where it's going to go, are you going to have to uh, move furniture? Try not to move furniture because if it breaks, then you're responsible for it. Um, so the smaller jobs actually cost more per drop than the bigger jobs. So if you have a big job, you know, and, and I, I know people do these, these big jobs all the time and it's not a problem for them. So they're doing two or 300 drops at a time in a building and things like that. And that's a big job. Uh, I would say anything, you know, above 20 is, is probably an, a, a middle of the road job. Uh, between 20 and 50 and I would say anything over 50 is starting to become a big job and they're all priced a little differently so you got to realize that now you know as I said at the beginning you're gonna have to have a contract so you're gonna have to come up with the uh, the wording to the contract to make sure you're you're paid appropriately most of the time for even medium drops it's it's uh, you know 50% up front and 50% upon completion um, and I would always put due upon completion. So it becomes due that day. Doesn't mean you pick it up that day. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean you pick up that check that day, but it means it's due that day. And I'll tell you the reason why I learned this at Burlington. When I used to work at Burlington, I'd contract out some cabling all over the country. And I got used to dealing with other vendors and their, their prices and how they would vary in different areas of the country and things like that. And uh, I would tell them up front that it would take us uh, around three months to pay them. And a lot of people were upset over that and they would ask why. And one of the things that I found out while working there was we would get a invoice at the end of a job and it would say due in 30 days. Uh, and I'd sign off on it and I'd give it to my boss and she would sign off on it and, and give it to a, you know, a accounting uh, accounts payable or whatever and they would see that due in 30 days and they would stick it in a pile that meant they were going to touch it for 30 days and then once they had 30 days on that then they would consider about paying it and that would be another 30 days then it would have to be audited uh, by the auditing department to make sure that it was a legitimate job and it was done and everything else so by the time the person received the check it would be 90 days and so what I would tell my vendors is, I would say on the invoice, say do upon receipt. It's, and that would cut out 30 days uh, right there with the big corporations. Big corporations are gonna take a lot longer to pay than, than a smaller corporation. And if you've never dealt with a company before, then you might want to not extend credit uh, to a company. Uh, in any project that you do at first, if you don't know them. Um, but 50% upfront, 50% due upon completion is absolutely reasonable and uh, reasonable today. And you might have other terms with customers that you know, things like that. Um, there's nothing wrong with, with asking for the check uh, when a small job is done. Okay, I pulled five outlets. 
here it is, like to get paid. Or the, the, the key is on the small ones of people you don't know who they are, is that when you walk into the room to do the work, you say, Mr. or Mrs. XYZ, I'm going to be here today. I'm going to put in two jacks for you. Is that what you wanted? Okay, sign here. Say so two jacks are going to go in. I'm going to charge you time and materials. It's going to be X amount of dollars. I estimated it's going to take, you know, um, you know, three hours to put in two jacks and everything else. If it's less, I'll charge you less. If it's more, I got to charge you more. Start at the time you left your car and at the time you're back in your truck or your car, that's what you charge. And you go back in when you're all done and you say, okay, uh, I'm ready to be paid. Can I pick up a check at this time? Of course, you say at the beginning too. You say, when I'm done, will I be able to pick up a check? And a lot of times the, the people will say, um, oh yeah, that's no problem. And because they want you to do the work. And so when you're done, you pick up the check. <laughs> now there's been a couple of times I put in like phone systems and I was all done and I would tell them I need to pick up a check, um, you know, a certain time. And, uh, you know, as soon as it's done, as soon as you're happy with it and, and you have this year warranty and I'll be happy to come back within 30 days and, and reprogram the system any way you like. So it's not a problem. And they would say, oh, okay, come by and pick up the check. And then I noticed as I would get close to the end that the owner would get up and leave and uh, the employees would be there. And I would say, I'm supposed to pick up a check. And they would say, we don't know anything about it. Well, where's the owner? I don't know. I'd say, hey, it's no problem. Don't worry about it. I would go into the phone room and I'd pull the processor out and I'd take the processor with me. And, uh, you know, it's just a card. Just pull it out. And then I'd get a call about 10 minutes later from the owner. Hey, the phone system's not working that you just put in. I say, yes, I know. I'm really sorry. I needed to pick up a check and I have the processor right here and I'm ready to slide it in. Do you have the check? And this is, I've done this more than a handful of times in my uh, time there as a owner of NOAA Voice and Data. And then I go by and I pick up the check and everybody's happy, you know. And, and I know that new businesses sometimes are short on money. So you have to pay attention to this. I know this has nothing to do with bidding. But it does at the same time because you do want to get paid. So you do want to work in such a way uh, that you ensure that you get a paycheck at the end. So just don't give people credit if you don't know who they are. And I would say the first time, you, if it's a small job, you should be picking up the check at the end. You know, people get plumbers. Plumber fixes the toilet, unclogs the sink, whatever. And they walk up to you with the thing and they say, sign here and I need to pick up a check. And you should say the same thing when you're, when you're doing this, the smaller jobs. Now, the bigger jobs, they're going to take a little bit longer because you're actually going to do a bid. Um, you know, uh, you're actually going to bid the job. And so if you're going to go bid the job and things like that, then there's going to be terms in there when they're going to pay. And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, before I even start the job, man, you got to cut me a check, you know, a week before, uh, five days before, two days before, whatever you decide. I need that check because you want to make sure that check clears the bank. I've had checks that have bounced and I've had trouble getting collected uh, with the full amount. Uh, but the bottom line is you want to ask that. And then you want to remind them that it's due, you know, at the, de at the end of completion of the contract, you'll need to pick up the check. I, that's how I handle people for the first time. I don't know who they are. And I guess I got too many scars. You know, sometimes people say, well, you're just so wise in this area. It's not wisdom. It's scars. That's what it is. It's because I've had people rip me off and I've learned my lesson. Now, most people, I would say 99%, maybe not, you know, 95% of the, the business owners out there, they're just honest people, you know, and sometimes they're a little tight on cash, so they might want to postpone paying you, but 95% of them are completely honest people uh, and probably even higher than that. But uh, every once in a while you run across, uh, you know, what I would call the dirt ball. And uh, you got to work to, just to get paid or you'll never get paid. You know, I just remember one time I put a jack in, just one jack. And sometimes when you start in a, a business, a new business, that's what you're doing. You're putting in, you know, the small ones, the onesie twosies all over the place. And I put in the jack and um, then I invoiced the person. I was kind of naive. I should have picked up a check while I was there. Um, but, you know, after two or three months, he hadn't paid. And so I called him up and I said, hey, uh, I kind of need to get paid on that one invoice. You know, remember that jack I put in the wall? And he said, yeah, well, I didn't like where you put it. And I said, well, <laughs> hold on. I put it within a few feet of where you requested. And it has to be that way because sometimes 
There's something blocking that wall behind it or whatever, but I put it right where you wanted it, in the area you wanted. And he said, well, I don't like it there and I'm not going to pay for it. And I said, sir, no problem. Uh, no problem at all. Um, in fact, I'll be out there this afternoon and I'll remove that jack for you and I'll, um, you know, fix the wall so it's, it, it's back to normal. And sorry to inconvenience you. And he said, oh, no, you can't remove that jack. I'm using it. And I said, well, then I'll need to be paid. Okay. And of course, um, being a contractor, uh, this is something, at least in California, um, I, I never had to use this, but I am a licensed contractor, low voltage contractor in California. And so one time this, I, I cabled uh, this building with close, for a closed circuit TV, cabled the whole building, it was difficult because it was all in the warehouse. He had a ton of cameras because he didn't trust anybody. And I understand. Um, but when it was time to get paid, he kept on putting me off, putting me off, and pretty soon he didn't even take my phone call anymore. So I got a hold of the senior person at the warehouse there, because they kept on claiming he wasn't here, he's on vacation, he's doing this, he's doing that. And I said, well, you know, as a contractor, and you signed the contract, I'm going to put a lien on the building, and, um, and uh, the, the sheriff's department's going to come by and they're going to put a seal on the door. No one's going to be allowed to break that seal. It's under penalty of law. I'd be more than happy to have them do that. And, uh, of course, within an hour, I got a call from the guy and he was angry at me. I was going to pay you. I got this big company and it takes forever, you know, to get bills through. Well, it was like nine months. It doesn't take that forever. And I'm not a multi-million dollar operation. So <laughs> please consider that. And, and then I got paid. So you're, you're going to have that payment type of thing. So make sure you have a solid contract. And when those people that refuse to pay me, um, when I went to court, I went to small claims, let's say, because it was under like $20,000 or something. When I went to small claims, I won every single time because I had the paperwork. So I had the contract, I had the work order, I had the work order signed that the work was done. So I had proof that it was done and everything else. And, and I tell you what, I spent five minutes in front of the judge and he said, you know, you not only get the money, you also get additional funds uh, for your uh, time of being here and your effort and everything else. So make sure you got a really good contract. Uh, ways to get them sometimes is uh, if you work for another company, just look at the contracts they use um, and, and get an idea or pay a lawyer. Pay a lawyer that knows uh, construction law though, not divorce lawyer or or something like that, or a product lawyer, because they don't know. Um, or you just go online. Sometimes there's really good contracts online. And, um, and of course, you're going to have different contracts. Sort of small onesie twosies, you may not even need a contract. Take a risk. You know, it may pay off. Most likely it will. Uh, but for the bigger ones, you're going to need detailed contracts uh, to handle um, what you're doing. So the first thing you need before you do a cabling job is a solid contract and a procedure in place, knowing how to deal with people, um, you know, things like that, and uh, making sure that, that you turn people that you work with, turn them into good customers. You know, people often say, well, you know, fences make good neighbors. They absolutely do, and that's what contracts do. They make great customers. And, uh, you know, a, a, an honest person uh, is going to sign a contract. Um, you know, I heard this nonsense where people would say, well, you know, um, my word is my bond. Well, that's a bunch of nonsense, to be honest with you. I, usually that means I'm not going to pay you. Um, and I often say, well, if your word's your bond, then you don't mind signing the contract. And they'd say, oh, don't you trust me? <laughs> and I would say, of course I trust you, but your word is your bond, right? And that means you're not you're willing to sign a contract. So the first thing you need is a contract. Um, and then in uh, the next video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about how to um, actually uh, do the bid, how to gather the information to actually uh, bid it. But the first thing you're going to need is that contract. I can't emphasize that enough, man. Uh, every time I get messed up and every time I get hammered, it's because I had a weak contract or none at all. And it's okay when it's only a couple hundred dollars, you know, so you show a loss, you learn a lesson, you know, nah, never going to do that again type of thing. But the bottom line is, if you're going to do a decent one, then know what you're doing and make sure you have a contract. And if you got to go to a lawyer at the beginning, then go to a lawyer, but make sure you go to a good lawyer, uh, a person that understands contract law 
when it comes to uh, construction. And also, you know, make sure um, if it's your uh, state, some states require that you have a contractor's license. I don't think there's much value to it personally. I've had it for uh, 25, 30 years. No one's ever asked me for, well, maybe they have a couple of times. Um, but to be legal, you got to have one. You got to have a business license, things like that. And the last thing you got to have, these are all administrative things before we even talk about the actual um, bid and proposals and uh, request for quote and request for proposals, things like that. But you got to have liability insurance. Um, I was at a place where they were talking to me about doing cable in, and they said, and the last guy, <laughs> you always hear that, and the last guy did it this way. Um, a guy was in the room, uh, a fairly new building that had a lot of equipment in it and everything else. And as he's moving the ladder around, he, he broke the sprinkler system and caused about $100,000 in damage. So you got to make sure you have liability insurance. It's not that expensive, by the way, but you got to have it if you're in business and you should be able to show it. And if you have employees, you got to have workers comp. You should have your, your license. If you're just doing onesies, twosies, you know, Okay, so you're learning nothing. Yeah, be careful. I don't know. I don't know. I am not a lawyer. <laughs> so do not take my advice as legal advice. But I've told you all the things you need and preliminary. Uh, if you're going to do contract work, if you're going to do uh, cabling uh, for someone else. So thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.